this lesson, we'll introduce the concepts of conditional and total probability and show the mathematical relations that relate these two important probabilities. The joint probability for two events, A and B, could be written like this in terms of the intersection of the two events, but, but it's often written more compactly like this, A comma B. Either way, these probabilities represent the probability that the events A and B both happen. As an example, let's suppose we roll two six-sided dice. The event A might be that the sum of the dice is less than 5, and the event B might be that the sum of the dice is an even number. Now this table shows all the possible sums we can get, which are integers ranging from 2 to 12 based on the result for the first and the second die. Now there are 36 possible sums that we could come to, and six of those are less than five. Therefore, the probability for event A, that is the sum of the devices, the dice is less than five, would be equal to six out of 36, or one out of six. Now, 18 of the 36 possible sums are even numbers. Therefore, the probability for event B, that is the sum of the dice is an even number, would be 18 divided by 36, or 1 half. Now, four of the sums are both less than 5 and even, so the joint probability that both A and B happen is equal to 4 out of 36, or 1 ninth. Now, let's suppose we are given some partial information. Suppose, for instance, that we know that event B occurred. That is, we know that the sum of the dice turned out to be an even number. Now, conditional on knowing that, what's the probability that event A occurred? That is, what's the probability for A conditional on B? Now, we write this probability the way we've shown it here, and it turns out there's an important rule that relates this conditional probability to the joint probability and the probability for the conditioning event. The conditional probability for A, conditional on B occurring, is the joint probability for A and B divided by the probability for B, the conditioning event. For this example, this would be 1 ninth divided by 1 half, or 2 ninths. Now graphically, we could see that 18 of the outcomes satisfy the condition that the sum is even, but of those, only four satisfy the condition that the sum is less than five. Therefore, we might conclude that the conditional probability is four out of 18, which would be two ninths, just as we had shown with our formula. This more general expression, though, will work for all situations, not just for the ones where we can count equally likely outcomes like we're doing here. Suppose, for example, that we know that the probability that it snows and that the temperature is less than zero degrees Fahrenheit on New Year's Day in a particular town is equal to 0.2. And we know that the probability that it snows on New Year's Day in this town is 0.5. Well then, we can determine the probability that it's less than zero degrees Fahrenheit, conditional on knowing that it snows, as the ratio of the joint probability to the probability for the conditioning event, which would be 0.2 divided by 0.5 or 0.4. Well, sometimes we'll know the joint probability between an event A and a collection of events, B1 through B2, all the way up to some capital N. And all of these events that we're calling B sub N will be disjoint and complete. That is, the intersection of all of the events with each other would be empty, but the union of all the events would be the complete sample space. This means that one and an exactly one of the events B sub n will always occur. In this case, the total probability for the event A could be determined from these, this collection of joint probabilities by summing them all up. 
That is, we'll sum the joint probability of A and B in over all N, and when we do that, we get the total probability that A would occur. Now using our concept of conditional probability, we might rewrite each of these joint probabilities as the product of a conditional probability and the probability on the conditioning event. Now because many problems are posed by specifying these conditional probabilities, this is an important way to remember the concept of total probability from joint or conditional probabilities. As an example, suppose we have a box that contains 31 fair coins, that is, have a heads on one side, tails on the other, 12 unfair coins that have heads on both sides, 40 unfair coins that have tails on both sides, and what we'd like to do is draw, select at random, one of the coins from the box, flip it, and find the probability that we would see heads. Well, if we draw a coin randomly from the box, and it happens to be the one with heads and tails, then the probability that we would see heads would be one half. That is, conditional on getting the fair coin, the probability of seeing heads is one half. Well, the probability that we'll see heads conditional on getting the unfair coin that has heads on both sides, well, that would be one. And the probability we'd see heads conditional on the unfair coin with tails on both sides would be zero. Now, because there are 31 fair coins in, in the box and 83 total coins, the probability that we get the fair coin that has heads and tails on each on the two sides is 31 out of 83. Because 12 of the coins have heads on both sides, the probability that we get a coin, a two-headed coin, is 12 out of 83. And because 40 of the coins have tails on both sides, the probability we get the two-tailed coin is 40 out of 83. Now to determine the total probability that we draw a coin and see head at random and see heads when we flip it, we'll start with the probability, the conditional probability that we see heads, conditional on getting the fair coin, times the probability we get the fair coin. Then we'll add the conditional probability that we see heads times the probability conditional on having the two-headed coin times the probability that we draw a two-headed coin. And then finally, we'll add the conditional probability that we see heads conditional on getting the two-tailed coin times the probability of drawing a two-tailed coin. And when we add those up, we'll get 55 out of 166, or roughly 0.3313. Well, in summary, the relationships between conditional and joint probabilities and the way that we use conditional probabilities to evaluate total probabilities are important associations that we'll use for many applications of probability theory.